Whiskey, Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. And do I have a great whiskey for you today? This is from Cambus. Cambus is the closed grain distillery in Scotland. So it's a Scottish grain whiskey or Scotch grain whiskey, single grain Scotland whiskey. This is um, made on the 24th of, Fe of February 1991. This was bottled on the 29th of October 2014, and it was matured in a refill sherry butt cast number 55889. So this is bottle number 315 of 495, and it was bottled at cast strength with 54.1%. I love this from Signatory Vintage. Now, it gets even better. Oh. Is that not a great sexy bottle to be very very honest here so this is whiskey base number 61305 and um, this whiskey has a very very long history and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the history after I pour something 23 years old by the way um, about 99 euros over here it's no longer available I bought it at an auction it's a closed distillery the prices are going up now, um, 1806, according to my research, the distillery Cumbus was first founded as a malt distillery. Wikipedia in German says 1813, uh, I don't know. And then in 1837, they converted it to a grain distillery. Well, why? Because, of course, um, Mr. Coffee had to first invent his column stills. Now, um, the interesting thing is, in the year 1906, there was a campaign there was actually advertising campaign it was called campus or cambus patent still grain whiskey not a headache in a gallon <laughs> now don't forget this grain whiskey is much lighter than the malt whiskeys way back then in 1906 now 1906 the malt producers got together and sued Tom Bosen said, hey, you can't call your spirit a whiskey because it's not made from 100% single malt, grain whiskey, uh, malt barley. And the same thing happened basically also in Ireland, a whole different story, but they refused at the beginning to use this. And then um, it was actually decided by the Supreme whatever, for me as American, it would be Supreme Court. It was some, something else. It said, yes, grain whiskey is whiskey as well as single malt so it was actually placed on the level playing field yay so um a couple years before that in 1877 six of the major grain distillers actually um were merged together to create the scottish grain distillers which is the pre pre predecessor from diageo today so 1877 the first amalgamation of the six different distilleries of grain well unfortunately on the 13th i'm sorry 23rd of september 1914 a fire broke out and distilled and, and destroyed the still house now the warehouses were okay but the still house was destroyed well 1914 first world war and so on it took them 24 years to actually rebuild the distillery 1938 was the new opening wow Great Depression, all that going on. And they back then had two coffee stills. And they used those coffee stills until Diageo, which formed. And um, actually, because of all the different mergers and acquisitions and so on, and they decided to actually close this distillery in 1993 instead of they mothballed it, instead of actually refurbishing it and putting more money into it. Don't forget, there was a slump also in whiskeys um, back then in the 80s in particular. So what do they do? Um, Campos is still there, the building at least. Um, they still use it to fill up their casks, and it's still used as a warehouse facility. Now, back then, 1993, they closed. 1991, this whiskey was distilled, so two years before the closing. Their water source was the Lost Burn Reservoir. Okay. So, I think I've mentioned everything I wanted to. Um, very, very interesting thing. Single grain can be made out of corn wheat, barley, rye, anything that's a grain. And they usually just take the cheapest because they distill it through that continu the continuous stills up to over 90%, put it in a cask and let it, let it rest for maybe two or three decades. Now, I do have a question of why did Signature, um, Signature Vintage choose to bottle this whiskey now? 
54.1% um, is not in danger of going down below a certain uh, a certain ABV. Um, anything below 50% gets less money than above 50, so I, that was just fine. Um, was the butt discovered or was it just in the way? I think grains actually become fabulous more after 30 some years and not 20 some years. That's me. Now, don't forget, if you pay 100 euros for 500 different bottles, um, you're talking here about 50,000 euros for one cask. Now, 60 some percent of that goes in taxes and so on, and that probably 20 percent of that goes for a couple other things. But you're still left with maybe about mm, 12, 12 and a half thousand euros profit. That's not bad for a grain whiskey that was put away in 1991. So, question of the day, what were you doing in 1991? I was freshly married. My son wasn't even on the way. I was still a student at a university. Oh, this is nice. Now, my, my fantasy world says it should, it should be nicer. I had a 1927 single grain from old um, particular about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, and it was so great. Um, it had more of a um, vanilla moment. I think it might have been taken down to about 46% as well. This is actually cast strength at 54.1%, and it shows a little bit. Take a real bean, vanilla bean, wrap it up in the woodiness of leather, and just let it sit. Maybe add a little bit of lychee juice on top of it, and a tiny little bit of powdered sugar. Ta-da! <laughs> I love a good grain. Cheers, or cilantro, as they say in Scotland. Mm -hmm. Now, to be very, very honest, 54.1% is a little hot for me. Ah, now it's coming. Mmm. Mmm. But at the beginning, it was like, oh, that's a lot of heat. That's a lot of alcohol. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this down to about, as I said before, 46%. Is it too strong? You're too weak? Yeah, that's me. I know. Right? I know other people say, cast strength, cast strength. There's got to be cast strength. That's not me. Um, <laughs> at the moment, I have a friend. He says, listen to the whiskey. It will tell you how it wants to be drunk. Um, Listen, and I think this whiskey, and that was my question also for Signatory Vintage, why did you bottle this now? I think um, five, maybe eight more years, get that up to the 30 mark, it would have actually dropped the AB, ABV down maybe to the 48 that I would like to have. And an older whiskey might have actually been a smoother, more um, gentle, more round, more coherent thing. But they chose 23%. Hey, get rid of it. We want the money now. Why not? Okay. And I guess there's actually a market for this. I mean, come on. Um, this, is, uh, this is collector's items. After, there won't be any more left. As soon as I opened up this bottle, it's like, well, I just ruined. Oh, that's a great cork, isn't it? This is fantastic. All chances of having a collector's item here. Um, and every time someone opens a bottle, someone else goes, hee hee, my bottle just increased in value. Thank you very much. That's a good thing about the closed distillery. Look at the um, Port Ellens. When I started three years ago, they were around 800, 900, 1,000 euros. I haven't seen a single Port Ellen in the last year under 2,500 euros. <sighs> it's amazing, yeah? I should have just bought Port Ellen, yeah? A couple bottles, and it's like, okay, no problem. Mm. Oh, it got much better. I get a tiny little um, moment of pine needles as well. This is nice. And on top of that, a whole lot of the vanilla. It's like a vanilla um, icing. Um, mm, very, very nice. Mm, mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. This is a whiskey you should spend some time with. This isn't one of those ones you say, okay, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. No, this is a little bit more of a sipping whiskey. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sip, but I'm going to do something that 
some people might think is a little bit of a bad idea, I'm going to dilute it down below 30%. Why? Because I want to get the nuances. I want to get the real flavor. I want to get everything that's going on here. I really just want to enjoy this whiskey as it is. So, very scientific. Boom, 30%. 25, 35, somewhere around that area here. Okay, very, very interesting. The wood comes out more. And um, on the label, it says nothing about sherry. If you go to Whiskey Base 61305, it says it was a refill sherry butt. So I believe it. And what really comes through is a light moment of that sherry, just kind of a whiff of that also comes in there. And it's very, very interesting. So those are tired, old sherry butt. So we have bourbon barrels, we have hogsheads, and we have a butt. They're usually much bigger. And if you notice, you got 500 bottles out of one barrel at cast strength. You notice that it's a little bit bigger, right? I'm going to actually add a little bit more. <laughs> so, got it. I get the lychee a little bit more. I get a white grape. Ghost gooseberries. Hmm. Mm. Mm. It really is amazing what flavors come through even more now when you dilute it down and you enjoy it. Oh yeah. That barrel char is there. The vanilla is there. A tiny touch of leather is still there. The aromas just, um, the flavors just come out as like a little flower that blossoms in the, the spring summer or the spring heat warmth. Mm. This is a whiskey which I don't really think needs to have the cast strength. Whiskey Jason, whiskey from the viewpoint of this guy in Germany. Um, all right, going back here to cast strength again. So I went cast strength, I went 40 some, 45, I went 30 some, now I'm going back up to cast strength. Um, this is just, uh, I can't wait for the day that I have my signature vintage Kleinlich. Oh, <laughs> they're getting up there, $200 plus at the moment. Uh. So one day I'm going to have to pull the trigger on that. All right. I get much more of a melon moment now. It's very interesting when you go down and you go back up what you're getting instead. Um, and that's this adventure sometimes you should take. Spend some time with the whiskey like Ralphie does. Put a t teaspoon in there. Put another teaspoon. Put a third teaspoon in there. You can always add more whiskey. No problem whatsoever here. And you can just enjoy this. You can just find this. You can, you can discover what this whiskey has to say. As I said, the whiskey will speak to you. Just listen to it and it will tell you exactly what it needs to be. My whiskey says, take me down to 46, 48%. Mm. Towards the end, it gets very, very nice. Oh, yeah. That barrel char, just, just tiny little bit. It's an old cask. It's not a tired cask. I talk about the Irish all the time, about these old tired casks. No, 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 no. This is an old cask, and it's not yet um, given up all it had to give. It gives up a lot more of that vanilla, those not much tannins as all, at all. Mm, very, very good. But the optimal drinking alcohol here is 46-48% in my personal opinion. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Sometimes I don't want to swallow, I just want to coat my entire mouth all the gums from up to down and just kind of let it soak and absorb it. Mm, that's one of the good whiskeys. This is a solid B in my book. 
maybe a B minus, but almost a, with water, it's a B. All right, very, very nice. I like it a lot. Value for money, 100 euros, 120, 130 dollars for this. C minus. Now, be honest, closed distillery, 23 years old, cast strength, signature vintage, beautiful bottle. Did I mention it's a closed distillery? You won't be able to ever find any more of from this. Um, all that's been produced has been produced and there's no more coming. Um, there's a limited, limited quantity from that whiskey still out there. And it was closed 26 years ago. Amazing. So my question of the day is, do you know of any other closed distilleries? Now I have this little map here. This is actually from Alba Collections with Scotland. And on this we can actually see that there are some so-called grain distilleries closed. They're more of a pink type of color. And if you look right here where my finger is, da da da, you see almost sterling there. And you see Campos, you see um, Carsa Bridge, you see Strathmore. So there were three distilleries just really close to each other. They were all producing grain back then. Um, they're all closed and no longer existent. Today we have North British. Today we have some, what other grain distilleries do we have out there? We have um, Strathseidel, we have um, Drumcaldi, and we have up at the north, we have something called Invergordon, and we have looking for something else with Rose Isle. Um, must be in the space side here. Oh, well. So there are a couple other distilleries out there producing. Yeah, Elisha, Elisha Bay, um, Gervin, yeah, exactly down here in the south. So my question is, what other distilleries, it doesn't have to be a grain distillery, it can be just a distillery, are closed, are ghost, are mothball, are no longer producing that you know of. Of course, you know Port Ellen, of course, you know Rosebank, of course, you know a couple of others. Write them down in the comments. I'd be, enjoy that, having a little conversation with you virtually. All the best. Thank you very much for watching. My videos come out about three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, Whiskey Jason here, Whiskey from the Viewpoint of a, an American Tasting Rare, one of 500 and some bottles, and Exotic Whiskey's closed distillery. I think I fulfilled all the requirements today. See you soon. Bye-bye.